11-5 Analyzing Data to calculate measures of central tendency to draw and interpret box and whisker plots. Let's go over the words mean, median, and mode, the most common measures of central tendency. The mean is the sum of the data values divided by the number of data values. So for instance, in this example, we added all the numbers and then we divided by how many numbers we had to get four. The median it, for a data set in order is the middle value for an odd number and it's the mean of the two middle values. So in this case we had eight values. That means we're going to take the two middles, which is three and four, and we're going to average them and the 3.5 will be our median. Our mode is the most frequently occurring value and in this case there are two. Let's take a look at um, a frequency table in which we have multiple amounts of job offers. So two students had zero job offers, two students had one, four students had two job offers, and so on. So we're going to take these frequencies, we're going to multiply them by each number, and we're going to add all those values up and um, divide by how many students there were altogether. And there were 15 students altogether. So the mean is 2.2. So uh, on the average, students got offered 2.2 job offers. If you arrange them in order from small to large, the very middle score was 2. And there, the most number of uh, job uh, offers was 3, and 5 students had those, so that would be the mode. All right, an outlier is a value that is substantially different from the rest of the data in a data set. If the data is one variable, outliers can occur at the ends. They may be misleading because they affect the measures of central tendency. So in this situation, we have a, um, a set of data and you can see that uh, once we've ordered it, 98 at the very end is 25 away from its nearest neighbor and all the other neighbors are much closer. So that is identified as the outlier. Let's take a look at this. Identify the outlier in the data set and then find the mean, median, and mode of the data set when the outlier is included. Okay, so um, I need to go into my stat and I need to uh, edit it. I've already included in this first one um, a lot of the data, but I do need to add uh, one number and that is, uh, I think I forgot the 376. Okay, 376. All right, and so I just enter it. All right, so we need to, to, in order to figure out the outlier, a lot of times it's a good idea to sort your data. So to sort your data, you would go into stat, and then you would press two, because that's gonna sort. And we wanna sort a uh, list one, and so I'm gonna press second, and key number one, because above it it says list one, parentheses, and then I press enter. Now the data is sorted. Let's go over to the uh, stat and then enter. And you can see that the data sorted small as seven, then it gets larger and larger and larger. Now uh, it looks to me like the outlier is not the seven, because seven is, um, the difference between 51 and seven is, uh, 40 something, but the difference between 229 and 376 is over 100. So I can see that's my outlier. So we'll identify the outlier as 376. Okay, now it's asking us to find the mean, median, and mode. And to do that, we're going to go to stat, and we're going to go to uh, calc, and we're going to go to one variable statistics, and we're gonna look at list one, that's where all our data is, and then we're gonna press calculate. Now you can see at the very top is the um, mean, that's X bar, X bar is mean, so that's our mean. And our median, if you just go down, it says MED, and that's median, and that's 156. Uh, I don't think there's any mode because I don't think any of these values repeated themselves. Now it says for us to remove the outlier, so I'm gonna to go to stat, and I'm gonna go enter, and then I'm gonna go down to the very last value because that's the outlier, and I'm going to uh, uh, get this, and then I'm gonna delete, 
And now I'm going to do it again and run all the stats again. So I'm going to go to stat, go to calculate, one variable stats, and then go down to calculate and enter. You can see that this mean is different from the previous one. It's a lot smaller because I don't have that bigger number there anymore. And if I go down here, my me median has changed to 140. And again, I don't have a mode here. All right, so hopefully you got the idea there. Okay, the range of a set of data is the difference between the greatest and least values. And then we like to kind of divide the data into force. And what we do is we first find the very middle, which is the median. And then in the first half, we divide it in half. And that first part is called a quartile. And then on the other half, we divide it up and it's also called another quartile. So uh, let me go ahead. Here's the numbers in order from 62 to uh, 86. The median, the very middle score, is right here. And then we take this list of numbers, these numbers, these six numbers, and we find the very middle, and that'll be 84. And then from this six numbers, we are going to find the middle, middle number. And so that's quartile one, quartile three, quartile is fours. The inner quartile is uh, the range from quartile three to quartile one. And range, smallest to largest, maximum, minimum, modes. All of these are important. Okay. Sometimes it's better to, instead of just listing the numbers, to put them into a graph, and that's called a box of whiskers graph. And the box of whiskers graph will indicate the, the uh, median, and that's what this is, the median. And then it'll indicate the minimum and the maximum. The quartile will be here. Now this is the box part, and then this is the what we call the whisker part, and then here's the other quartile. So this is what we call the interquartile range, so from here to here, and then the whole range of the whole data will go from here to here. So it kind of gives you a value without you having to list everything. All right, so let's take the same data, uh, and uh, I'm going to, uh, it's gonna be in my calculator already. I'm gonna to go to stats and then enter and I want you to notice that list two is all of that data on the um, uh, temperatures here. So I'm going to create a box and whiskers graph for you. So what we do is we go to uh, second step plot and then we press enter. We get into here and we're going to press uh, on. So our plots are on and then we're going to go over here to box and whiskers, press enter so that it highlights that. And right now the data I want is in L2. L2 is right here, right above the key number two. So I press second two. And I'm gonna check my Y equals. And I am going to clear that because I don't want to see that. And uh, so now um, I'm going to press zoom. And in zoom, I'm going to choose zoom stat, which is nine. And what it'll do is the window will take a look at the data and it'll graph the data for us and it'll choose my window for me. So I'm going to choose nine and here's the data. Now if I press trace, you can see the median is 76 for the coastal waters and you can see uh, that the upper quartile is 84, the maximum is 86 and then we'll go down and over here is 66 and 62. Now these are all values that they gave us in our stats when we ran the um, one variable statistics. But now we have a visual look at it. Um, all right, let's go on to the next one. Okay, make a box and whiskers plot for the set of values. Okay, so let's review that one more time. I'm gonna go to stat and I wanna show you that I already have it in it. So this is list three, all of those values are right in there. And I'm gonna run through this one more time. So I'm gonna go to uh, second stat plot. I'm going to enter. Uh, I turned it on. The box and whiskers is on, but I don't want it for list two. I want it for list three because that's a brand new. So I write list three and then I press, uh, I, I'm done. And I can just press zoom and let the calculator decide the window. Press nine and there it is. Now if I press tr uh, um, trace, you can see that my median is uh, 15, my first quartile is 12, my lowest value is 11, 
my third quartile is 19 and my highest value is 20. So the calculator can help you find all of these. Okay, we want to find percentiles. Here is an ordered list of midterm test scores for a Spanish class. What value is the 65th percentile? In other words, what is the number and all 65 uh, pe people who had test scores will be underneath that? So of the 20 values, 65 percent falls at or below the value of the 65th percentile. Okay, so we're going to take 20 and we're going to times it by 65. And when we get that, that's 13. So we have to go to the 13th number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So this is the 13th score from the bottom, and that is um, the, uh, at the 65th percentile. So in other words, 13 values fall at or below the number 82. Okay, let's take a look at this and try again. We're going to uh, have to uh, order these before we even try to figure out the 25th and 80th percentile. So before I do that, though, there are, uh, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there are 20 values. And uh, when I times that by, uh, find the values at the 25th and 80th percentiles. So I'm going to times that by 25%, uh, and 25% is just 1 fourth. So 20 times 1 fourth is 5. So I'll go up to the fifth number to get the 20, 25th percentile, and then 20 times 80% is just going to be 20, and 80% is 4 fifths, and then when I 4 fifths, that's just going to be 16. So the 16th value will be at my 80 percentile. Okay, so let's go over here. Let me go ahead and press stat and press enter. And you can see over here on L4 is, uh, all, are all my values there. So I have to get them in order. So second quick, and then I press stat, and I want to press sort, so it's two. And I want to be for L4, and L4 is above the four, so second four. I need to order this before I can count. And then so we enter, it's done. Go back to stat, enter, and now they are in order. So I'm looking for the fifth value, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth value is three. So the 25th percentile is that. And then for the 80th percentile, I'm looking for the number at the 16. And if I look carefully, it'll say 16 and that is 16. 16 happens to be at the 80th percentile.